Hi there and welcome to another Bug Bites tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to extend our Django Ninja API and we're going to add create, update and delete endpoints to allow us to change and add and delete existing data. So what we have at the moment are a couple of endpoints that are get requests. They focus on retrieving data. If we cross over to the blog post here, we now want to extend this API with the following routes. A POST request to API slash tracks will allow us to create a new tracking database and that's via an HTTP POST request. We want to be able to edit or update an existing track via a PUT request and we'll identify that track by its ID in the URL. And similarly for the DELETE request, we want to find a track and get rid of it, remove it from the database. So we're going to write these three endpoints now, starting with the POST request. So back to VS Code, we have a Ninja API object defined on line 6. What we want to do now is create another decorator and it's going to be an API.POST. This is going to be a POST request to the tracks endpoint. And what that's going to return is it's going to return a 201 HTTP created response along with the schema. Now, it means we're going to create a track from JSON data and we're going to return a 201 response with the serialized track. So let's see how that's done now. We'll call this function, um, just give it a generic name, create track. And that will take the Django request object and it will also take the track that's coming in from the JSON data. Now this is something that you can do in Django Ninja. We take a track schema or we type annotate that as a track schema, but this is coming from JSON. So Django Ninja allows you to define the structure of the request data as well as the response data. And we're doing that here with this parameter track. So we're expecting some JSON data that conforms to this track schema. It will have a title, an artist, a duration, and a an last play field. So we can specify that with the track parameter to the API function. So what we can now do is go about creating the track and we just simply say track.objects.create and what we're going to do is pass in dictionary track.dict and we're going to destructure that into key value pairs, uh, keyword arguments in Python with the, uh, the two stars here. Now these pydantic models and the Django Ninja schemas, they have a function called dot dict which will convert the model or the schema to a dictionary. And once you have a dictionary in Python, if you want to pass keyword arguments, you can use these two stars and that will split that out into keyword arguments. We can then create the track and we'll store that in a variable called track. And then we simply return the track and that should do the trick for us. Now, this is a post endpoint, so we can't just go to the browser URL and test it. So I have um, postman opened here and I'm going to test creating a track with postman. Now, this is the URL, it's a POST request and I've specified the header should have a content type of application JSON. The body is what we're going to send and this is what we want to create. This is the track we want to create at this endpoint. So what I'm going to do is, is start the python run server command, the manage.py run server command. That will start Django's development server. And what we want to do is hit this Django Ninja endpoint and create the track. So if I execute this request, we're sending data with, which conforms to the track schema. It's got all the fields. We hit send and we should get back the 201 created. You can see that here along with the serialized track. Um, so we've hopefully created that track here. And if, if you want to verify that, we can go into Python's shell, the Django shell. And if I import, um, let's say tracks.models, we're going to import the track model and verify that this has been created. And if we look at track.objects.last, this is the last track that was created in the database, which should have been the one that we have just posted. We can look at the instances dictionary. And if I import the pprint function, we should be able to inspect that a bit closer. Let me just pprint that out. And this is the last track that was created and you can see that it matches what we had in the JSON data on Postman. So we have posted a new track to this endpoint and it has created that in the database and you verified that by 
using the Django shell to pull that last track out and inspect its instance dictionary. So that's very good. We have successfully created a track. The next endpoint, I want to edit or update an existing track. So to do that, we're going to define another method and it's going to be api.put. And this is going to, um, I'm going to copy from up here. It's going to go to slash tracks slash track ID and track ID is a path parameter in Django Ninja. So the response is going to be the same as this as well. We have a 200 response with the track schema or we have a 404 not found if the track ID does not exist. So with that, we can now define a new function called change track. And that's going to take the request as always. It's going to take the track ID, which is the path parameter, which will be an integer. And finally, it's going to take the, the serialized track data. We'll just call that data here. And that's going to be a track schema. Now, because it's a put request, we're expecting JSON just like this here. So we need to specify what the request structure in that body is going to be. And we want to say that just like the post request, it's going to be um, a track schema object that needs to have these four fields um, to be a valid object here. And if, if for whatever reason, one of those is missing or you have something not conforming to this schema, it will complain about that. And that's one of the validation tools that are provided by Django Ninja's schema object. So with that in mind, we are going to copy the code from up here. It's going to be quite similar. This is a put request and we'll try and get the track by its ID if it exists. And we're going to change this line here. So if we do get the track, what I want to do is I want to iterate over what we are being given in the request. That's this, the data being sent by the user or the client. So let's iterate over that data. So for attribute and value in data.dict. Now, as I explained up here, you can convert the schema objects to dictionaries. So we'll convert it to a dictionary and then we'll look over the key value pairs using the dictionary.items method. And what we're going to do is call the built-in set attribute function. And that takes an object as its first parameter, which will be the Django model track. And we're going to set uh, the attribute that we're pulling out of the track schema, the data being sent, we're going to set that to the value that we're iterating over. So just to explain that a little bit, we get data from the user, from the client that comes in and it is converted into an object called data. We've got that data and what we do is we pull out the track from the database and we want to update that with the data that's coming from the client. So we iterate over that, that key value data and we set the attributes on the model as necessary. And once we've done that, we can call the track.save method. And this is a Django model method that will persist the changes to the database. And then we can return a 200 response along with the serialized track. Okay, and in the case that the track does not exist, we just return the same message as before. So that takes care of the put request. Let's test this using Postman. So if I go to the update track endpoint here, um, it goes to API slash tracks slash one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a new body that will hopefully update this. So if I look at the raw data here for track one, you see that it's by an artist called Ultra Neat. Now what I can do is I can look at the raw data here. Let's copy that into Postman and we'll make that the body of the update request. And let's change the artist in this case to Led Zeppelin. And we'll send the put request. Let's make sure the server's running here and send the put request. And that's in method not allowed. I don't know if I saved, you need to save the API.py or I do. And we'll send that request and you see that we get back new data that says that the artist is now Led Zeppelin. So let's check that in the browser. Um, if we refresh this page, you see that at, that has successfully changed the data to Led Zeppelin. And we can do other things. We can change any fields that we want here. We can change the duration to 60 and that should update and reflect on the API. So that's the put request that is for changing existing data. The final endpoint I want to do quickly is the delete endpoint. And I'm going to copy the put request here. It's going to be fairly similar. We're going to 
send a request to a, an endpoint with a track ID. Now the response schema is going to be the same. It's going to be a 200 response, except we aren't going to return a track because we're deleting that track. So I'm just going to set that to none. And I'm going to keep the 404 response for the not found schema because obviously there might not exist a track with that ID. So what we can do is we'll change the name of the function to delete track and the method is api.delete, it's a delete request. So what we're going to do now is simply try and get the object. And if we find the object, we can, we don't need to do this iteration here, but we can call track.delete and that will delete the track from the database. And then we can simply return uh, the 200 response with no data. We don't need to return data because we've deleted the track. And we can keep this as it is. And now we can finally test this out in Postman. So the delete track endpoint, I'm going to make this a delete request. We don't need a body. We're not updating anything. So we don't need to send any fields. We simply send a delete request. And if I do that to track one, you see we get a 200 OK response. And if I now refresh this page here, you should see that the track does not exist. And that verifies that this works fine. So what we've done here in summary is we've created um, endpoints for getting data, for creating data, for updating data, and for deleting data. That's basically what a CRUD API is. You have models in your database and you have endpoints that allow you to get and change and create data. We've done this using Django Ninja. So that's all for this video. Please check out the blog post if you want more information. And we will hopefully make more Django Ninja videos very soon. So thanks for watching and see you next time.